everyone. It's RiseQuid007 and we're back with another video. So today I'm here to talk about the new Oculus Quest 2. Now coming off of the Quest 1, Quest 2 has actually some pretty cool new interesting features. First things first, the screen inside the Quest 2 is actually almost 4K. I think it's just below 4K. I don't really know, but I know it's close to 4K, which is really cool because it shows that it's getting more evolved and it's getting closer to looking like real life. So now the controller also got revamped too. And the processing power of the Quest got upgraded along with a few other things as well. So let's get into it. The new screen of the Quest 2 is actually 1832 by 920 pixels per eye. That means almost 4K screens per each eye, which sounds really awesome. The new Quest 2 is actually smaller than the Quest 1, and it has new head straps as well. The original Quest had rubber straps on the back of your head, while the Quest 2 now has flexible fabric. Kind of like, maybe similar to how GoPro does their flexible headset, where it's just flexible fabric that flexes. I don't know, it might be similar to this, but this stuff is pretty comfy. And I think the comfort factor is what they were trying to go for. With the new Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 chipset, it makes the Quest 2 run faster and better than the original. But it also seemed improved on, and it really seemed like it was optimized to really run on VR screen simulation at top notch, along with the see-through mode too. Apparently, Oculus has been at work at trying to make the Quest 2 have little to have no effect on the thing I experience, where your ears, your eyes, don't really like each other, they kind of fight. Yeah, I'm talking about motion sickness. <laughs> they supposedly introduced a new way to not cause a delay from when you move your head to when you move your head in real life. I don't know. Which, I'm pretty sure if there was a big delay, you definitely feel it and you probably get motion sickness. It's like when William Osmond made a blackout car with a display on the inside that was delayed for like a few milliseconds or even seconds and you got to see like how it affected them driving. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Oh, oh yeah, that this is Oh this is, no. 2 seconds. This minutes. is awful. Like, okay. <laughs> oh no, not another one. Now the Quest 2 is actually lighter than the Quest 1, but only by like a few grams. And the battery life is basically the same. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't really see people who have the original Quest upgrading to the Quest 2 as all the same games that run on the Quest are running on the Quest 2 and vice versa. And there really is barely a change that I think people would really see a difference and want to buy the Quest 2. Well, actually, there might be. With the Quest 2, you now need a Facebook account to use the headset at all. And if you already have an Oculus account, you'll need to merge it with the Facebook account as well. But pretty much besides that, Facebook really isn't that big of a problem. It's more of a pain of having to go create a Facebook account if you already don't have one, just to use your Oculus set, which already costs like 300 to $400, but it's whatever. At least with your Facebook account, you can send friend requests to all your friends. Oh wait, one thing I do worry about people who get the Oculus Quest 2 is if they get their account suspended on Facebook. Now, accounts get suspended on Facebook actually a lot more often than you would think. They get suspended for pretty minimal reasons too most of the time. Like you had some suspicious activity here when you didn't really do anything or you logged in on a different thing. Now you have to like confirm that you're that person by sending them like a picture of your ID card. It's, it's dumb. My question is, if your account on Facebook gets suspended, does that mean you can't use your Oculus anymore? So far I really haven't heard anything about that, but that kind of seems like a big deal. Right now I would say the biggest competitor for the Quest 2 would probably be like the HD Vive Focus Plus, which is a pretty good VR headset as well, but that's exactly it. It's pretty good. That's the whole thing with VR right now, is that everything looks cool and all and you can move in real life and it shows you moving, but in total it's just all pretty good. I mean, it's definitely not perfect and it probably won't be for a really long time. And VR really doesn't seem to get that much attention unless a new headset comes out or something like that. So I don't really know how long it's gonna take for things to start looking like, I don't know, the Oasis. I'm joking, that'll probably happen in like 30 years from now or so. But I definitely know if some like mainstream company like Apple or Sony took VR, 
and made their own headsets, we might get even a more realistic version of VR faster. But all in all, the Quest 2 seems like a great starter VR headset. With a cheap price of $299 for the 64GB version, that's not bad for a VR headset. Anyways, if you like this video, comment down below if you ever think we'll get to Oasis status, or even if you made it this far in the video. Anyways, make sure to like and subscribe if you like this tech content type thing, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.